in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed I want you to pray in one minute and then I want to teach you something profound about sacrifice and then we'll take our end of year sacrifice and I speak over your life we'll have to do this very fast go ahead and pray now that you know this thing up it says happy are you if you do them please pray these are instructions receive grace from God Go ahead, someone is praying. Go ahead and pray. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me rest on me oh, oh, oh rest on me oh, oh, oh rest on me oh, oh, oh rest on me the holy ghost power rest on me let your grace this grace called favor rest on me rest on me let your grace rest on me, rest on me. Your power, power to prosper, rest on me, rest on me. Oh. Listen very carefully. Many years ago, I went to the Lord in prayer asking him the secrets that can really, really cause a man to get into the heart of God. Because I knew that more than money, more than anointing, the real secret to becoming great in the kingdom is when you touch the heart of God. I've read my Bible a bit and there were a few people in scripture who really touched God to his heart and his response to them was miraculous. Their lives changed. Men like Abraham, men like David, men like John the Beloved. There were people who did certain things that touched God to his heart. Men like the centurion, men like Nicodemus. There were people who really went deep beyond his hand and touched his heart. That was where God began to teach me about the mystery of sacrifice. Believers, I want you to listen, please. First Samuel chapter 1 and verse 21. The Bible says, And the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. The man Elkanah, as a priest, 
he went with all his house, not alone, and went to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice. Psalm 50 verse 5, gather unto me my saints, the Bible says, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Something began to happen in my life. I listened to Dr. Mudok, Mike Mudok. I've listened to many of the fathers that God has granted them grace. They've been able to break through certain realms. And I took out time to study because I really wanted to know this for myself. And then I also wanted it for this great ministry. And I began a journey with God. And when I learned the power of sacrifice, I remember God began to test me with certain instructions every once and again and I, I i wanted to know what is it about sacrifice that touches the heart of god is it the money or the clothes is it your life what is it about the sacrifice of jesus that touched the heart of god that translated to the salvation of all men what is it about the sacrifice of his willingness to lay isaac down what is it about the sacrifice of elijah that brought fire from heaven what is it about the sacrifice of one ancient king slaughtering his son and the bible says an indignation rose up to heaven what is it about the sacrifice that happened in the days of samson coming manoah now and the angel rose through the sacrifice and went to heaven what is it about sacrifice that the bible says a few people bound themselves and said they will not eat they will not drink anything until paul was dead and I found out that sacrifice is a mysterious law in the spirit. A law that has been abused, unfortunately. A law by which people have practiced without understanding to their peril. But a law that if and when understood can produce a miracle out of anybody. This is a law that is respected among occultists and satanists. A spiritual law that is respected, a law that even heathenistic people respect. Sacrifice is one of the four pillars upon which love sits on. Now watch this. There are four pillars upon which love, the word love, which is the nature of God. The love of God rests upon four pillars. The Bible says, oh, the length, the breadth, the depth, the height of the love of God. And it says for the saints to know it. And this came to me by revelation of the Spirit. The four pillars upon which love sits on. Number one is called passion. Number two is called commitment. Number three is called pleasure. Number four is called sacrifice. Let me take it again. The four pillars upon which love rests on. If you want to know love completely, you must see it expressed in these four dimensions. Number one, passion. It's impossible for love to be there without passion. Number two, commitment. The staying power. The power to remain. Number three, pleasure. Anything that has love comes with it, pleasure. And then number four, sacrifice. Of all of these four, the leader, as far as describing love is concerned, is sacrifice. Greater love had no man than this, than a man laid down his life for his friend. Are we together now? Because I wanted to know why God would demand from people. In my work, I remember the first time God gave us an instruction as a ministry. And we emptied our account as a ministry. And many times God had given me this instruction. I, I, I mean, I didn't have a problem giving. But I wanted to know because I wanted to have an understanding. Why does God demand sacrifice from men? I mean, this is something that he has everything. Why does God demand sacrifice? Not just sacrifice of money. But sacrifice of your life, your time, it looks like every time God sees sacrifice, he takes the individual seriously. Hallelujah. And then I began to study on this subject of sacrifice. And when I found it, I rejoiced because I knew that I had found my way out of many things, including mediocrity, including pain, including financial calamities. I want to share with you this. This is very important. There are four things. Sacrifice, the demand to give. Every time God demands that an individual gives resources, proceeds of your strength, your time, your energy, what is his goal behind it? I want to tell you this. 
Sacrifice and giving generally is one of the ways that we conquer idolatry and materialism. Listen to me. Every once in a while in your life, God will demand something within you and the goal is not really the money. He did not kill Isaac later on, but Isaac had died in the heart of Abraham. Are we together? The only way to deal with idolatry and the, the plague of materialism is that every once in a while, God will demand something from you. Something that rattles the place, the, the place that materialism wants to take in your life. I have found this to be a healthy way of living. God will always demand as a way of checkmating idolatry. Do you know why? Because you see, because of the works of our hands, we place value on anything that we dissipate intellectual energy, energy in terms of time, energy in terms of whatever to have. For instance, if I give you a hundred thousand as a gift, you can easily give it because no effort, it came as a gift. But if you receive a salary of a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand as a gift and a hundred thousand as salary are not the same because on one is no effort no labor no nothing on another is reward it's a product of your creativity your passion if god asks you to give the two hundred thousands he will want the one that is a a not just a gift are we together is the same principle isaac used for jacob he had cattle at the back of his house but he said my son i want to bless you i'm coming there but go to the field far to the field don't receive it as a gift from anybody i'm not in lack it's a principle go to the field go and use your effort catch the wild animal bring it back home cook it let me eat that one my soul will be delighted and i will bless you for a long time, it did not make sense to me. I mean, you can imagine. Isaac was there. Rebecca was there. It was her that ended up preparing what he ate. He would have simply said, my wife, I am hungry. Please go and make something for me. It is never about money. It is never about releasing whatever it is. It's something. It's a spiritual principle. And Esau went down and got this and returned and he made it himself the mother did not help him make it the father wanted to eat the one that he made by himself he said doing that will delight my soul and i want to release something upon you every time god instructs believers to come with sacrifices either of time energy and resources i want you to know that is beyond god wanting to impoverish you god does not reduce people are we together now? God does not reduce people. It is inaccurate understanding of givings like sacrifice that reduces people or manipulative teachings of such. And then people innocently respond to it and they find out that there is no harvest. I remember the first time God placed as a ministry when this instruction came. One week after that, God did something in this ministry that to God be the glory. I mean, it was, it was a miraculous manifestation of his hand. We began to see the hand of God in mysterious ways. You can imagine those days in Zaria. I mean, not to demean the region, but I mean, how much really can come out of there to run a ministry that was increasing over 95% of the support, the giving that was coming, was coming outside of Zaria and even outside of the nation. I began to see strange manifestations of God. God speaking to people and instructing them, come and bless this ministry. Come and do this. Come and do that. And then that statement that God is not a man that he should lie. Truly, truly, my life began to change. I had studied about finances. I had studied about liftings. I had studied about the blessing. Once in a while, God will come to me do you know, there were times when I would sense that there was danger around my life, around the ministry. And every time, this, this was, it was my, my consistent work with God. Every time there looked like it was a, some kind of danger, I would go to the Lord in prayer and suddenly he would begin to prompt me. 
bring a sacrifice. And I'm saying, Lord, this one now, what for again? I, I'm sensing danger and God would demand something from me. The third thing that made God, I noticed in my walk with God, every time I was ending a season, my birthdays, end of year, God will always demand a sacrifice. Then I began to study these patterns. That this thing, and for every time I obey God, God did something miraculous in my life. There were times that I would pray and pray for hours. What is this thing I'm sensing? There is a negative spiritual cloud. It's like, it's like some kind of plot by darkness. And when I'm done praying, I will still sense that troubleness and unrest. But the moment a sacrifice goes, it's like calm returns. And then I began to learn that these are spiritual patterns. And it is because the saints do not know it. They have been cheated in many regards. Are we learning now? This is very powerful. Now write this down. Your sacrifice unto God is number one, an expression of love. Your sacrifice unto God is an expression of love and value for him above all things. Please write it down. Your sacrifice unto God is an expression of your love for him and the value that you have placed on him above all things. We usually invest our time and our resources around the things that matter to us most. So when God places a demand upon you to give, especially sacrifice, whether of your time, of your resources, among the many things that he seeks, ladies and gentlemen, hear me, is to test your love for him, to see if truly he is exalted in your life above every other thing. It is easy to sing it, be lifted, be exalted. It is easy to say you are number one in my life, but the real proof of God's position in your life is tested in the place of sacrifice. Anything you cannot give God is above you. Anything you cannot give God is above you. An uncomfortable truth. Anything you cannot give God. If I cannot give God my car, my house, my money, it is above me. The meaning of that is that that is what I am worshipping. One of the ways to choose between God and mammon is to use one to serve the other. You can use God to serve mammon or you can use mammon to serve God. Unfortunately, many have used spirituality to serve money. Preaching because of money. Doing all of this because desperate for it. It doesn't matter. They compromise on spirituality because they want money. When God demands from you to sacrifice, what he's doing is he's helping you maintain his position as the highest priority in your life. Let me tell you the truth. Most believers do not know how much they are attached to things. Materialism, I have taught you, is not just having materials. You don't have to be rich to be materialistic. An obsession for money, for things that is above your passion for God. Claiming you love God is cheap talk. It is when you are able to lay down that is proof of love. Imagine if the father kept saying, I love you. My creation, I love you. Sons and daughters, I love you. But he said, let me demonstrate that love. He sent his son. And when Jesus walked upon the earth, he died a gruesome death. And he did that with joy in his heart as proof that he loved us. Now, we know indeed that we've been loved by God because of the cross. The cross reminds us that God truly loves us. Is someone learning? Someone looks at me and says, Apostle, I want to love God the way you love God. Let me tell you the truth. My life has been episodes of laying down everything in my life. That's how I ascended that height of love. When it has to do with the business of love, is beyond just passion. You can roll on the ground and stand up and you are far from him. He says, they draw nigh to me with their lips. Is that in your Bible? But their hearts are far. There are many prayer warriors who don't love God. They can pray. There are many people who sing love songs. There are many preachers who preach love songs. But the moment it has to do with laying down something that costs you, the king said, I will not give God anything that does not cost me. Hallelujah. Truly, you want God to become your priority? It is impossible to become a lover of God 
without going through the school of sacrifice he will demand something from your life that can become an idol number two why does God demand from us sacrifice your sacrifice is an expression of honor your sacrifice to God is an expression of honor first Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30 the B part first Samuel chapter 2 it says wherefore I, I'm, I'm really concerned about the B part but now the Lord said be it far from me for them that honor me this is so true I will honor but they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed can I tell you ladies and gentlemen God honors every God loves everybody but not everybody has the same place as far as his dealings is concerned no there are people God places priority upon because they have learned to lay down everything for his namesake. Sacrifice is an expression of honor for God. Honor for God. Honor for God. You cannot see him, but when he demands that you bring a sacrifice, let me tell you sincerely, it is because God wants to test how much you honor him. To honor a man means to regard the person. Look at me please, ladies and gentlemen. When they tell you a personality is coming to your house, someone you place high regard on, what's the first thing that you do? You make sure that you fix your house. Sometimes you would need to quickly clean things up and make sure that you set table, you bring the best of your plates, the best of the meals that you can find. You make everything, you make the room conducive and you know, very, very excellent. And then when the person comes, you are happy. And the person sees your display of honor, especially when they recognize it and commend you for it. That glow on your face, it makes every sacrifice worth the while. Many do that to men. They do that to politicians. They do that to Apostle Joshua Selman, but they will not do that to God. No. How do you love a man's creature more than the creator himself? How do you respect the creature more than the creator himself? You see that now? Honor. When you honor a man, you will give and give sacrificially and it does not matter. Hallelujah. There are people who, certain visitors come to them and say, I want to go somewhere. And they literally will cancel their schedule for the day and say, I am driving you. I'm going with you wherever it is. I'm going with you as a proof of honor. But many would not do that for God. Those who know, understand sacrifice are those who express honor to the Lord. Now listen, number three, sacrifice I wrote here is one of the mysteries that control divine intervention. When God demands a sacrifice from you, it is because it is he wants you to engage one of the mysteries in the kingdom that controls divine intervention intervention in first Kings chapter 18 from verse 30 to 33 divine intervention it is true Elijah said to all the people come near unto me remember Elijah and the prophets of Baal he's about to command fire God wants to demonstrate his lordship over the land that he's king of kings and to stop God's people from being oppressed as a result of Jezebel and her prophets but it came on the wings of sacrifice the Bible says he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down next verse the Bible says Elijah took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob unto whom the word of the Lord came saying Israel shall be my name uh -huh. The Bible says, and with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. 33. The Bible says, and he put wood in order and cut the bullocks. I mean, what do the animals have to do with the presence of God coming down? I understand the altar being set after the tribes of Israel. I mean, what is God looking for with bullocks? And he cut them into pieces he laid them on the wood and he filled them with water and then he called upon the God of Israel and the Bible says the God of Israel answered by fire fire came and licked up everything can I tell you the truth 
one of the mysteries of divine intervention is sacrifice when things go bad in your life when it is time to turn certain things around sacrifice is one of those mysteries that has brought people out of financial calamities brought people out of health conditions i remember years ago or roberts of blessed memory listening to him teach he was teaching in a benihin meeting and he said one time he was sick it was so mysterious the doctors had said he was going to die they said dr roberts we're sorry you may not leave and he called one of his secretaries and said how much do i have in so so, so account and when they said it he said transfer everything i think to some mission agency or so and the people were surprised they said do as i've instructed and as soon as they did that a miracle happened that night and Ora Robert would live many, many more years before he would later pass on to be with the Lord. Sacrifice. I have practiced this as a principle and commanded many supernatural interventions. There are business people who do not know this principle. There are church leaders who do not know this principle. There are many people who do not know how to provoke in divine intervention using the key of sacrifice. It's a spiritual principle that has been manipulated by demons. You go and meet somebody, some harbourly somewhere, and say, you know what, I need this political position, I need you to upturn some court case, I need whatever it is, and they will look at you and take a deep breath, and say, are you ready to do everything we say to do? This thing you are seeing, or this possibility is doable, but are you ready for the condition? And sometimes they give all kinds of ungodly conditions. Bring someone you love the most, your wife, your son, your daughter, whatever it is. And people go that far to do some of those things. And you find out that doors keep opening for them in ways that you cannot imagine. Sacrifice is a mystery that controls divine intervention. Number four. Why does God demand sacrifice from the saints? Are you ready? Because it is one of the mysteries for accessing the sworn blessing. Please write it down. You need to hear this one. Sacrifice is one of the mysteries for accessing the sworn blessing. There is something called the sworn blessing. Genesis 22, 15 to 18. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. And said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, what is the, this thing? Thou hast not withheld. That is what you have done. You have been so lavish in bringing your future, bringing your all, your only son that you had to wait about 25 years to have him. Because thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, he says, this is what I have sw I've sworn to you, that in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. 18. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to believe that there is something called the sworn blessing. We also call it the commanded blessing. Numbers 23, 19 and 20. It's important that I teach this so that many people will understand that sacrifices are not just about dropping something that costs you. It is your understanding that gives value to what you are doing. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent had he not said and shall he not do it? Had he not spoken and shall he not make it good? The next verse please. Behold, I have received commandment to bless and he had blessed and I cannot reverse it. There are things that God brings upon the lives of people on account of their diligence, on account of their sacrifice. God will say things to them through men that sticks to their life forever. Hallelujah. I wish I had the liberty to share with you some testimonies. Honestly, this principle has worked wonders in my life. One time the Lord gave a, an instruction 
to sow a seed as a ministry. I remember after that time, God began to open phenomenal doors. Phenomenal doors. And then, God came to me one time and gave me an instruction to give a very huge sacrifice. And it was at that time, it was something that was really costly. Do you know, when I did that, there was a gift that God planted in my heart. That gift of joy. The peace of God that nothing, that money. It's not always about money multiplying, no. There are some things money cannot buy. You've heard my story that one time, many years ago, you know, um, I had one, I had an issue with, with, with the bank, you know, my account was hacked that time. And you know, the little I had then, everything, everything just went like that tried to put in my ATM the thing did not work and that was the end of it I remember by the the you know the, the following Monday went to the bank ah, you know the manager and the things they were saying ah what is all this going on now what is you know what is going on and they now said all the people who were staying with me who have to come and write reports and all you know those things I said no 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 these people are innocent they have no business with what has happened they said well this is what we do they have to call our office in Lagos. Cut this long story short. I was there having the meeting. God is my witness. And then the Lord spoke to me. True story. And he said, my son, what are you doing here? In my mind, I was saying, what am I doing here? My money just disappeared I'm, and I'm there finding what? True story. If I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. I mean, I need to find out what is going on here. And then the Lord spoke to me. I remember. That is this your money or is my money? And I said, Lord, you are the Lord of everything. And the Lord asked me to get up from that meeting and walk out and go away. And that was the end of it. I told them, you know what? This case is over now. Oh, no, 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 no. Our integrity. I said, that's not my business. I'm on my way out. The owner of my life and includes everything has demanded that I walk away. Case closed. I mean it before the God of heaven. I walked out of that place. It was not a small money. Oh. And the peace that surpasses all understanding. That was where I truly received the gift of peace. There are some things that you can never have until the realm you get into the realm of sacrifice. Peace, joy. These are things a job cannot give. These are things money cannot buy. I remember walking and I was just singing to the Lord, telling him how much I love him. And I meant it from my heart. I knew I was not lying because it had been tested. It wasn't God that did that, but just the fact that he could instruct me to get up and leave something and I, I did. That was it. Hallelujah. God began to multiply this ministry. God began to show mercy. And I will tell you one testimony for your hearing. One day I was praying and the Lord spoke to me and said, My son, from today, I will start raising men to bless you. Not bless the ministry. I will start raising men to bless you. I was praying. I still remember just walking around praying in the spirit. Occasionally, I would, I would check my phones. And I remember that time an alert came. I had never received, you know, a lump sum of that kind of money it just came to me and i was saying what in the world is this i said let me let me calm down maybe it's a mistake somebody made before i touch something and later on they come to harass me and, and so on and so forth yes it was a real estate company i remember the name that sent it a real estate company three months later the same amount was sent again Three months later, the same amount was sent again. And that was all. For the next one year, at least 50 of those kind of amounts. Just that very amount like that. I said, God, what are you doing? What is the name of this? What is the meaning of this thing you are doing? He that honors me, I will honor. You see that? But he that despises me. Please listen. I'm not telling you something somebody taught me. This is my life. God began to open doors for koinonia in a strange and miraculous way. I mean, people would call from all over the world, literally, and be patient for days. We had to start reaching the bank to say, listen, you need to help us spread our 
platforms for giving because people want to give can you imagine someone will be disturbing you for over two weeks and say i've not given till now i've asked you people to do this i need to give my five hundred dollars my one thousand dollars i tried people even became victims of scammers but they were still patient how does someone keep begging you and saying he wants to give people started traveling i'm not exaggerating traveling from across the globe they will come inconvenience themselves land in lagos take a flight come through kaduna and come down to zaria not for prayer they were instructed by god we came all the way from america from this place from england and god said we should come and do this others will come and give and say god said we should collect the ministry's account number let's verify so that when we go back let your power power to prosper rest on me rest on me let your power power to prosper rest on me rest on me oh, oh, oh rest on me oh, oh, oh rest on me Was learning something about God I was seeing in my life the things that Ora Robert spoke about I was seeing in my life some of the things that God's general said so I can do ministry with integrity without manipulating people how will you call people to come and fund what you are doing without manipulating them you are not the only preacher on earth how will they suddenly turn their attention to you and bless you I had found my key gather my saints unto me that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice hallelujah the next time the Lord will come to me he gave me an instruction he said I'm going to be sending you to God's servant prepare this when I send I rejoice in my heart now I had seen it work I know that it works that morning I remember waking up and God just told me today is the day with joy I got everything Got the next flight, I was on my way to Lagos, went to Canaan land, went to do whatever I had to do. When I finished by the grace of God, with joy in my heart, I knew that God is not a man. Those who don't know this are the ones talking against it. When you have lived in the reality of these principles and you become a living proof. If you are faking it and pretending it, you will be lying till you become poor. Hallelujah. Are you learning now? After I did, I remember I was going to get into the car and the Lord asked me to, he said, come out, place your hand on that ground. I placed my hand on that ground and he said, my son, from today, you have entered the overflow anointing. The overflow anointing. The overflow anointing. I remember those days, I wrote out, if I recall, the name of 10 mission agencies. 10 mission agencies. God gave me one of the instructions. I'm sharing some of these things. Some of you are hearing it for the first time. And God gave me heavy instructions. I mean, literally, almost like everything to those mission agencies. I did that with joy in my heart. And I stepped into another level of the help of God. And I said, if this is how God works, I conquer greed in my life. No, I will not withhold. I know there is a difference between waste. If you are doing this principally with money as your end you will be poor did you hear what i said let me tell you how it works god must be your focus not money now most people what they do is like a spiritual transactional bribe as they are holding one thousand in their mind now they are thinking ten thousand who else do i bribe since i cannot go to someone to scam me let me come and drop it in an offering basket hoping that god will suddenly double it overnight God gives you money, but he gives you more than what money can buy. When your heart, let me tell you the missing ingredient. Many believers give, but their heart is on carnal returns. Not God. Not God. Not God. Not God. God has given me many very dangerous instructions 
financial instructions that I've done that sometimes I thank God I'm the only one that knows about it because I wonder who, who ever believed that I did such a thing let me tell you with all due respect most anyway God knows oh there are things you do ba, that touches the heart of God I made up my mind that I was going to prosper myself and that I was going to raise a people who love God but people who have conquered materialism I hate carnality material is this obsession for money but at the same time I also hate poverty that people should not just be economically ridiculed by life there are many other aspects to it productivity creativity I've taught you relationship value my goodness but sacrifice is an irrefutable spiritual principle when God comes to you he comes to bless you he really comes to bless you I don't know how many episodes of those demands God has made from my life there are some of them that have become covenant seasons my birthdays koinonia you know end of year and all of this right now as I'm standing now he's told me my own and I came here with joy because I know that my life is about to shift God there is nothing that God demands from you please hear me I'm speaking to the global family that is for his benefit no if God is looking for money he will not talk to you no how much can you give him you see that now I need to teach you so that it's not just about dropping seeds it's a wrong narrative and a wrong mentality and sometimes I confess that we pastors maybe it's because of the physical money everybody does not care it doesn't matter whether people understand or not just bring it you bring it without revelation I assure you it will not work truly not many people will tell you this you give just as a as a bribe unto God you will not get anything your attention must be on Jesus and the integrity of his word and then allow him surprise you and do things for you that you cannot imagine sacrifice that's what brought some of us to this this level that God has helped us by grace and by the Spirit koinonia will never be doing the things that we're doing now by the privilege of God's grace no this one is beyond the realm of tithes and offering there are things you do to touch the heart of God all blessings come from God through men to men but those men don't come on their own there are mysteries that bring them to you Jesus did not call the three wise men the magi to come to him he was a baby but there was something that was done in the spirit on account of an instruction and the Bible says the magi rose holding gold frankincense and myrrh as a baby they did not consider that he was a baby they worshiped him and they drop those things this thing does not happen because you are a man of God it does not happen just because you are you know whatever it is no hallelujah there are sacrifices I've made for the next level of koinonia there are sacrifices I've made for the next level of my life this ministry you see and with all due respect without without being being you know mistaking me for pride we stand today upon sacrifice it is not what we do once and for all it has become my lifestyle nobody lives what works there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth and I have seen all kinds of things that God has done sometimes it's not safe to share certain testimonies you know but just for you to know that this mysterious God there is nothing in my life that will ever make me give up on the mystery of sacrifice it has kept God's position intact in my heart by dethroning material things you know you get to a point where God begins to help you and let me tell you the truth the tendency for material things get into your heart and then God demands that they go and as soon as they leave his position remains intact in your heart there is nothing in my life today and I stand, I'm speaking to the globe. In the name of Jesus, there is nothing in my life today as I stand before you that I cannot give God. Nothing. The Lord will come to me years ago and say, Son, if you will let men see me, 
there is nothing I will not give you. I'm not sure I understood what he was saying. Now I know I did not understand what he was saying. This is an opportunity for someone right now. The end of year sacrifice is not a ritual. By the grace of God, we have demonstrated a level of integrity that is, that is clear enough for you to know as individuals and as a ministry. You see that now. By the privilege of God's grace, we have raised sons and daughters in this ministry that have capacity financially. If we're in need of money, there are people we put together. We will not come and talk to a globe like this. This is an opportunity. This is no manipulation. God has been faithful to me as a person. God has been faithful. It is an insult, honestly, and a mockery to manipulate God's people for money. Not at this level. No. What you did not do before when you did not have, it's not today that God has shown mercy that you come to manipulate people. This is why I said, don't give yet. Allow me teach you. I have seen what God has done in my life today. Hallelujah. I shared with you about a group of, you know, some real estate people who came and met me. They first came to bless me with a property and said, Apostle, we have a covenant with God that anywhere we build an estate on earth, we must keep a house for you there. How do you explain this? How many houses can I stay in in my lifetime? I've not even seen them. I don't even know where they are. Don't envy you and don't be angry. You. The secret is this thing I'm teaching you. Sacrifice. Sacrifice is not all about money. How about access to kings? How about access to nobles? You don't just rise like that. Today I've stood before kings. I've stood before presidents. I've stood before nobles. There are things that have happened in my life today. God has taken me light years ahead of my contemporaries. I am telling you one secret. It is sacrifice. There are things that you do in the realm of the spirit that speaks to your children and your children's children. Remember I told you the story of the women in Joss that I bought sugar cane for, I paid for sugar cane for. And I remember that mama, I still believe that they are not normal human beings. God just orchestrated a system to test me to see me too i came to i didn't have much but i insisted and i remember them blessing me and that woman how holding having clothes that are not nothing no comeliness and she said my son forever walk upon gold walk upon gold walk upon gold we are able to do the things we do today because we have engaged these principles I don't want to tell you the bill and the budget for what was spent in the United Kingdom. Some of you will not even believe it. You probably will not sleep this night if you hear it. I tell you sincerely, even if you are successful. We're not teaching cunningly devised fables here. It is true. And then God says, don't collect any offering. No offering, no giving, nothing. Don't talk about money. I want to rewrite something about the church that the church is not a weak and beggarly system waiting for the world no there is honor and dignity if we understand his ways if we understand his ways hallelujah the bills that it takes to run if koinonia was depending just on tithes and offering and all of that it would be a risk to close this meeting now for one month <laughs> May my God change your life from this night. May my God change your life from this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. When God brings you to a realm of supplies, it takes away distraction from your life. Please believe it and don't let anybody mislead you. One of the most distracting things in people's lives is this economic thing. There are pastors bleeding. Do you know there are many pastors that teach giving, but they don't give. This thing does not respect title. Whether you are called apostle, if you don't practice it, it will not work. It will not work. I never go to see any of our fathers of faith like that with my hand empty. No, I do that with understanding. And sacrifice for me is a delight someone. And last year, God came again with a word for me. Oh, I'm ready to step you into a new season. And then he gave a demand for koinonia to do, a sacrifice for koinonia. And it was with joy. And then when I, I was done hearing that one, 
he now said what I've instructed Koinonia to give you would double it and give that is your sacrifice I would have cried if I did not know God I would have rebuked that spirit with fasting and prayer but I know his voice when it comes it is for your own good these are the ladders by which we climb in don't just admire people and wish and also talk things you don't know behind some of this glamour you see is blood dripping on the altars of men are we together now there are men that God has sworn certain blessings on there is nothing the devil can do no probably the only thing he can do is to get them not to be saved and since they are saved they are under his feet forever sacrifice is a powerful mystery there are certain kinds of anointings that don't come into your life until at the instance of sacrifice hmm. hallelujah I have stepped into certain levels of grace certain levels of power because I went to pray and fast for more of God but he gave an instruction in addition to the prayer in addition to the fasting in addition to learning keys from materials you must release certain things and I obeyed him foolishly and stepped into certain levels of power this is the side that most people do not know about ministry there are certain immunities that you create on account of sacrifice if not some of us will probably have died you cannot do the kind of thing some of us I'm saying this with all humility there are things if you have not touched in the spirit you do what I'm doing you will not reach one month I tell you sincerely you will just die like a chicken you heard the story when we started koinonia that they brought a charm to overflow three somewhere there it was even the, the, the facility managers that called my attention and said there's something like this I said can you imagine oh no there are people who have already died you don't die twice hmm. hallelujah to travel around dismantling the gates of darkness age-long causes that have held people for decades and you just come and with one shout and then go scot free no sir if you're a minister of the gospel here please listen let me tell you this is what is not taught in church this is why most people don't have power again they do not know that there are things in the kingdom that are not gifts it comes on account of sacrifice I was praying preparing for today and I said Lord what would you have me give it is everything I have is yours and God comes to me again now love that I mean whatever he comes whenever he comes for me it is joy joy unspeakable full of glory if he never rewards me it is an honor to bless him it is an honor to give but for sure you can live the level you are now listen couples hear me just believing that is a job and promotion that will bring you to certain realms you may die of pain young people let me talk to you there are many people today you may never be able to build your house by yourself on salary I'm not a bearer of bad news except you want to live a life of death carrying trouble sorrow you see young people 30 31 the person is looking like 50 years because certain things are on his neck I show you a more excellent way there is a way in the spirit there is a way by which men rise there are those following from across the globe trusting God for liftings trusting God for open doors trusting God to end certain circles especially if you come from a family where things are not working don't sit down and say one day go better honestly speaking it will not change ministries can quantum leap to a new level businesses can quantum leap to a new level it is true this is why God places a demand upon us that we bring an end of year sacrifice and announcing that if not because God has set it as an ordinance in this ministry I will have no business asking you to do this because number one I love you and I rather go and flog it with God but again I love you too much for you to remain where you are there are people who have engaged this and they have risen to heights unimagined 
There are things that God has done in my life today. I'm not a very emotional person. But sometimes when I think about these things, my cry is not just because of the blessings that God has brought. My cry is that what would have happened to me if I did not know these things? Or what would have happened to me if I joined the ignorant people saying it does not matter? Probably only God knows the kind of bills that Koinonia would have paid. Can I tell you, this ministry has zero debt. We are not owing anybody dead or alive. Zero. Zero. Number one, now with all due respect to financial practitioners, we do not borrow as a ministry. It's a principle that we do not borrow. Everything, no matter what, is paid for cash. So I, I'm saying this, I, I hope you don't misunderstand me for pride. I'm saying this because God wants to help you. You belong to a ministry that is mysteriously helped by God. There is no reason why you should be in a situation where God cannot help you. No, it's not that. If it takes God waking someone from any nation, God will do it for the sake of this koinonia you are seeing. Yes, sir. When I gave God what he demanded of me the last time, my life stepped into another level. Beyond finances, the anointing. Beyond finances, increased influence. Beyond finances, the gift of good people. You know, sometimes with all due respect, my friends in ministry, sometimes they ask me and say, Apostle, how are you able to bring in the best of people? Worship people, do all of this. I tell them, I don't have the power to call people. You can call and they will not come. There is a voice that your seed has. Your seed can bring quality people to your organization. I'm telling you with all due respect, my dear people, this is how you came. These are mysteries in the kingdom. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Yes. I live in this reality and when it has to do with it, I understand it. You see, let me tell you, abundance is not just having what to eat. Abundance is having enough to fund the program of God and to become a blessing to people without it affecting you. And many people have not gotten to that realm. Don't show me the estates you have. Show me how much you have given towards souls without it affecting you. Then I will say you are rich. Our idea of being rich in church is who has a nice jeep, some jeep somewhere, or some estate somewhere, or some investment somewhere. As much as I appreciate that, that is not the kingdom's way of rating wealth. Your wealth is rated by how much goes from you to the kingdom without it affecting you. And if you have not gotten to that realm, there is still a place to pray. To say, Lord, I'm trusting God for a day, like I told my people, I think it was in Zaria or the leaders, where one person will call and say, what does it take to run Koinonia for one year? And some of you here in the nearest future, I know you have the heart. Believe me. That there are people here who will sign it quietly and say it is over. Nobody should even talk about money. You don't believe that? I told myself years when I could not even buy a good shoe. That a day will come, I will sponsor mission agencies. A day will come, I will not allow one missionary to die under my watch. I can't do everything, but at least let me do something for Jesus. Before you talk to me about finances, show me what you have done for the gospel. If you have not given certain amounts for the gospel, keep quiet. You don't know anything about money. Believe me. I'm not talking about people who have built empires. One flood can come and wipe an estate away, but not the souls that are saved. And souls are expensive. I respect people to the degree to which I see the money they have had committed to the kingdom. I respect the house that we build. I respect the cars. I respect all the, you know, physical things. But from a spiritual standpoint, those things are transitory. They come for your comfort and they go. But what really counts is how much went for the kingdom, for souls, for crusades, to bless lives, to help run the program of God. This is true wealth. And this is where God wants to bring us to. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Yes. 
So away from yourself, just say, I have my one million, my five million, I'm fine. When they say receive, I have what for? I mean, highest I can give church 100,000 or 200,000. It's not about the money. It's about loving Jesus enough to see that his program does not stop. Loving Jesus enough to say, Father, if you are trusting people, let me be your treasurer. Your last one failed you. Let me be your treasurer. And then you will lay up gold as dust in a way that not even you can explain. And it has nothing to do with being a preacher. Businessmen, please, I want you to listen to me. You have tried buying and selling. You have tried transactions. I introduce to you, in addition to what you know, a superior spiritual strategy. Show God you honor him, even in your business, and watch what he does. Show God you honor him in your ministry, and watch what he does. Show God you honor him as a family, and watch what he does. This thing has equal value in America, equal value in Canada. Don't tell me it is because of where I am. I'm in some village somewhere. Territorially, maybe economically, yes, you may not be in a place of advantage. But God can bring help from anywhere. The raven that brought food for Elijah was not where Elijah was. But it knew where Elijah was. This lifting started right from Zaria. It's not just Abuja here. No. I remember years ago when I was teaching my precious people. I taught them to love the Lord. From that, from when you looked at their life those days, you will be wondering, how will these people rise? Who will come and help them? Please don't play with the word of God. You are here wondering, I don't know anybody. Nobody knows me on the internet. You think because you are known on the internet, it means you prosper. Many popular people are poor and broke. Just because people know you does not mean you have money or you have help, generally speaking. No. Impact is different from popularity. This is my life. There is nothing I cannot give God. I am telling you this. There is nothing. But he always outgives me. He has refused to let me give more than him because he's the giver of all gifts. He gave so much, he gave his son. What can I give him that will surprise him? What can I give him that will make him say, I'm challenged? You want to see the hand of God? Learn the mystery of sacrifice. Believe me. Learn the mystery of sacrifice. I have had times, you can ask my protocol, when we are in a plane, I'm trying to catch some sleep, and someone comes to the plane to, to tap me, and says, Apostle, it's a privilege to see you. And he goes to reach out and brings out money. In a plane, we are going, I'm minding my business, going for a meeting. In 50 minutes, you can become wealthier than somebody for the next five years because God decided to help you. If you don't believe in Ebenezer, you are wasting your time. How did the person know you will be in the plane? And the person is discussing, how can I have your account number? No, no, it's not necessary. Don't worry, let's just pray. How they find it, I don't even know. I fought, uh, I fought finance department for a long time to make sure people don't have access to my account number. But now there's nothing I can do about it again. So that there is nothing that is suggestive of manipulation. Listen, I, God has not helped us financially because we are talking to millions of people. He has helped us because we obey him. Preacher, you will not get money because you are teaching a crowd. No. They will leave you as a preacher and go and give the person obeying God. Did you hear what I said? Being a preacher is not the reason why you are blessed. Being obedient to the principles of God's truth. We are going to pray. The end of year sacrifice is an opportunity for God to visit people. It's an opportunity for God to change the stories of men. Koinonia Global, listen. I'm speaking to believers. I'm speaking to our global family. You are tired of where you are spiritually. Perhaps there's a man of God listening to me and he's saying, Apostle, I need to step into the next season. I need to break out of this territorial limitation that has sat on my destiny. It has never been well with my family. It has never been well with me. This is your opportunity now. I'm about to pray. 
and we are going to give. I'm talking to three groups of people tonight. Number one, I'm talking to Koinonia Global, a family connected by covenant and understanding. Number two, I am talking to believers within the body of Christ that have this understanding. Number three, I'm talking to all who believe what they have heard and are willing to practice this with understanding. It is prophetic prayer plus understanding plus the action of obedience that equals to the rewards that come from sacrifice. You see where many people have been missing it? Some of you may have noticed that if you bring seeds to give me, you just bring it, the protocol will hold you and bring you back so that I will speak a blessing on it before you go because it's not about money. Many people are doing donation. They are not doing this spiritual transaction that makes for your rising. Let your power, power to prosper rest on me rest on me let your spirit spirit of wisdom rest on me rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me spirit of wisdom rest on me now I'm, I'm going to pray and you're going to give now I don't uh, I, I don't know I'm, I did not even inform the people how we're going to do this we'll just display the account details unfortunately I, I'm not sure there's room for people who are who came here with their seeds my apologies these are not things that we're even used to you can see that no arrangement was made for all of these things usually you would think that there should be offering baskets for this for those who want to give but this a sacrifice is not just an offering you are dropping I'm going to pray. Watch this now. I'm speaking to everyone, business people, men and women of God, Koinonia family, everyone participate in this. Everybody participate in this. Participate in this. Now for your end of year sacrifice, that's the account that is displayed on screen. Naira, USD, you know, um, you know, uh, pound, euro and all of that. And you can call the finance department if you want any help or any guidance make sure you don't fall prey to scammers please wait until i pray wait until i pray wait until i pray the moment i pray you can begin to give our international com um, a family companies businesses individuals hallelujah father I've taught your people your principles. I've taught your people your truth. You have changed my life by this mystery. You have turned this ministry around by this mystery of sacrifice. And Father, in the name of Jesus, in the presence of your people, potentially millions of people across the globe listening, they're about to bring their end of year sacrifice. Lord, many are making this sacrifice, trusting you, one for your presence, two for supplies, three for breakthroughs, for divine interventions to shift them to realms and levels in the anointing, to take their ministries to levels beyond their imagination. Lord, you have made our lives examples of what obedience can deliver. I pray in the name of Jesus, by this apostolic and prophetic anointing, that everyone across the airwaves here on site, America, Canada, UK, Kenya, South Africa, within the 36 states of this federation, as many who are hearing and as many who will be hearing, the families hearing, the businesses hearing, the politicians hearing, captains of industry, men and women you have helped, those who are trusting to receive your help, I'm praying in the name of Jesus, let fire fall upon their sacrifices. Let fire fall upon their sacrifices. Let fire fall upon their sacrifices. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that for everyone who drops any Naira, dollar, whatever currency, whatever amount, small or great, on account of this call, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
between now and the time of resumption what God did to me what God did to this ministry I pray that my God will do it for you I say it again what God did in my life what God has graciously done in this ministry may he do it in your life in the name of Jesus we are still praying something is happening to you that will surprise you I pray for those who are in financial situations now you've done everything you know to do I'm praying by this sacrifice rise to a new level in the spirit man of God rise to a new level in the spirit businessman rise to a new level of impact in the name of Jesus Christ I bring before the Lord struggling families not just in the area of finances that there is a cost that is placed on your family placed on your finances that people don't rise every time they want to rise something brings them down I call upon the God of Jeshurun in the name that is above all names on account of this sacrifice let the blood speak let the blood speak let the blood speak let the blood speak for someone here let me prophesy upon you you will lay gold as dust I say it to you you will lay gold as dust listen one of the things that sacrifice brings is the miracle of open eyes you see let me tell you finances bar there is a way God opens your eyes to see what people don't see It says as for the earth out of it comes bread that the increase of the earth is for all and even the king is fed by that which comes to the field there is a way sacrifice can command your eyes to see something and what you see will open you to a world of financial possibilities beyond your imagination this is true there are people who saw a miracle in the midst of rubbish because God opened their eyes when God opened the eyes of Hagar she saw an oasis in the midst of a desert until your eyes are open you will not see businessman hear me I'm praying for you whatever must cause your eyes to open to see where opportunities are to see where God has blessed for you that helps you enter your wealthy place I pray in the name of Jesus on account of this sacrifice may your eyes be truly open may your eyes be truly open don't be tired of receiving no I want to pray for you one of the things that sacrifice does is that it gravitates helpers towards you most of us right now are like the man in i think that should be john 5 or so verse 7 there about jesus came to him and said why are you in this condition and he said i have no man this is the challenge with many businesses i have no man i have no man as a preacher i have no man as a business i have no man as an individual i want to pray for you strategic quality men strategic quality partners strategic quality helpers receive in the name of Jesus Christ between now and the end of the year in the name of Jesus Christ if you respect and understand prophecy then receive this I'm praying for you between now and the end of the year may the God who lifts men may the God who lifts men I'm praying now particularly for your finances may God do something that surprises your finances in the name of Jesus some of you on account of what God will do from tonight you will build your house in a matter of months I say to you you will build your house in a matter of months you will finance the gospel in a way that will not even affect you 
Now hear me. By reason of this sacrifice, anyone here who has been held under the, the slavery of materialism, the slavery of money, you are obsessed about money, obsessed about material things to the point you can kill because of money. Let this giving crucify that appetite once and for all. Let every obsession, negative, ungodly, satanic, lost driven obsession for money and material resources. You can follow any man just because of money. You can go anywhere just because of money. Compromise on your faith because of money. I'm saying it again. Let your giving tonight crucify that loss forever. Hear me? Anyone here who has been involved in any dirty or satanic practice, hear me? By reason of this prayer tonight, I'm praying for you. What you need is repentance first, not giving. You know what I'm talking about? Practices and businesses that kill, steal and destroy so that you have money. It's not about money. It's about the salvation of your soul and the enthronement of Jesus. I am praying for you. Don't, when you destroy people and boast that I'm a rich man, you are programming disaster that will throw you away. It's important that people understand that men of God are not just obsessed about money. And anybody, it doesn't matter where the money comes from, just because you bring something to church. No, what is demonic is demonic. What is satanic is satanic. There is godly money and there is satanic demonic money. Are we together? Just because it is Naira and Kobo does not mean that it should be. And, and, and with all due respect, ministers of the gospel must respect the altar of God. Don't let anybody come. You know that this person is some confirmed whatever. And just bring the money because we need to run ministry. No. Let's serve God with integrity. Are we together? When people come from dirty practices, what they need is love and repentance, not collecting their money. Are we together? Yes. I'm praying for you. For someone, your hand has been empty all through this year. You have been praying, wondering. You've not gone down, but you have not gone up. I pray for you. The remaining days in December, honestly from the depth of my heart, I'm releasing grace and I decree and declare, rise to heights unimagined. Rise to heights unimagined in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to begin to receive. We'll just double this with the impartation now. One of the greatest gifts of God in my life is wisdom if you lack wisdom you will be poor if you lack wisdom you cannot be a leader i want to release that grace as we close this service you don't have to bring those under the anointing just receive father i stretch my hands upon someone who is in desperate need of the baptism of the spirit of wisdom i stretch my hands upon you like fire from heaven receive right now an impartation of the spirit of wisdom please help them take that grace right now take that grace right now wisdom that causes you to excel wisdom that causes you to triumph in the name of Jesus Christ let your spirit spirit of wisdom Rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, oh, oh. on me spirit of wisdom rest on me 
Don't worry, you will give, just receive. This is very important. In the name of Jesus, some of you are too slow in life and destiny. It is the reason why opportunities pass you. The keenness of spirit to maximize moments, you don't have it. I pray for you. It's called the grace for speed. Let it rest upon someone right now. That you will never lose opportunities. You will never abort opportunities in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the grace for speed right now. Receive the grace for speed right now. Hallelujah. I was having a discussion earlier today and my attention was drawn to a gentleman in this nation who had accomplished so much. I mean, this gentleman's awards were displayed like this and yet nobody knows him. And I said, how can somebody have this many awards and not known? And then I remembered there is a grace for visibility. If that grace is not on you, you can be as skillful all you can. You can be as knowledgeable all you can. Nobody will know you are there. There are preachers, there are ministries that desperately need this grace. There are businesses today that based on your level of competence, you should be working directly with the federal government because you carry all it takes to be competent. But the grace for visibility is not there who is ready to receive tonight in the name of jesus the grace that makes men know you are there and call for you to come from the back to the front is called the grace for visibility to every believer whose heart is open to receive receive that grace now in the name of jesus receive that grace now in the name of jesus Receive that grace now in the name of Jesus. The grace for visibility gives you elevated platforms. You always find yourself in elevated platforms that can give you room to serve Jesus or to serve your value in a way that makes you honored. I'm praying for you again. Every shame and reproach, everything that has not displayed your full potential for the nations to see and know to place a demand upon you, I decree and declare, let this grace bail you out now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please don't be tired though, this is our last service. I shared something in, in Zaria that I, I want to just reiterate as I speak over your life. There is a real grace called the power to prosper. But it does not work the way most people know it. Most people think the power to prosper is about money. Not at all. The power to prosper has nothing to do with money. It only brings finances as part of the things it commands. The power to prosper is the grace that makes men to advance in spite of limiting challenges. If you do not have the power to prosper, you will never go forward. Any obstacle upon you will keep you. You know how the power to prosper works? It works in three folds. Number one, the first assignment of the power to prosper is to alter your understanding. It gives you a superior approach to life. Are we together now? The first place it influences is your understanding. Number two is your productivity, the works of your hands. Then number three, direction. So that you commit your energy and resources in the right places. This is how it works. Every time we talk about the power to prosper in church, most people are thinking is the power to make more money. No, there are people who have money and do not have the power to prosper. The power to prosper speaks in your life. When a man carries the power to prosper, finance is only one of the least things that comes in response to it. It is a natural reaction to carrying that grace. When the power to prosper comes upon you, it works upon your mind. You are able to build systems and structures that move your ministry, your organization. Dexterity and excellence is the signature of the power to prosper. More than finances. Most leaders don't have the power to prosper. 
that's why they fail when storms come economic storms political storms one of the persons who had the power to prosper in the bible is called daniel you call it an excellent spirit is called the power to prosper he excelled through the reign of several kings and nobody could bring him down now you understand the song because this is what you are about to receive for many of you when you say the power to prosper your mind means the power to make 10 naira become 50 naira and it is true it worked for that but it is too carnal a, a, a basis for receiving the power to prosper has nothing to do with money it is capacity that empowers you your mind your hand and your feet your mind giving you superior illumination it causes you to see life from a plane of a victor and then your hands become productive excellence mastery competence everything your hand touches comes to gold you excel in ministry you excel in business they put you as a leader the power to prosper will fish you out from the ground and bring you to the front and then direction no wastage of energy everything turns to gold because you are directed by God I'm praying for someone again in the name of Jesus let the power to prosper now you understand I declare let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now rest upon your business rest upon your ministry rest upon your job rest upon your children rest upon your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ The power to prosper is the antidote for failure. When you fail and you are stagnated, when mountains refuse to move, it is because you lack the power to prosper. The signature of the power to prosper, excellence, dexterity, advancement regardless. It's a noun, thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. This ministry has not been without hurdles. My life has not been without hurdles. But the power to prosper will make you to quote this scripture with confidence. Now thanks be to God, which causeth us always, always is a key expression, always. Challenges are not unusual, but defeat, no, 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 no. Now let me pray. Let your power for signs and wonders rest on me, rest on me. Let your power for signs and wonders rest on me, rest on me. Signs and wonders are important. They help you reveal God to your world. When your life is ordinary, it is not worthy of admiration. It has to be always supernatural, always extraordinary. And that is the assignment of signs and wonders. That your life becomes a living epistle, a book that is open, that compels everybody to read it. Written in your life, written through the manifestation of signs and wonders, are the manifold possibilities of God as captured within your life. I pray for you. By this impartation, let an ordinary life come to an end. Let an average life come to an end. Let a life that excels, a life that reveals Jesus in a more superior dimension, let it rest upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now we're ready to give. Father, to everyone who is about to give now, whether here or online, I decree and declare in the name that is above all names, as you lay down your seeds, your sacrifices, let this be the beginning of a new day. Amen. I stand in partnership with all the graces that we have so lavishly received from the fathers of faith, and in the name of Jesus, under this corporate grace, I'm praying, as God has helped us, let it, let it walk in your life. The rod of Elisha will not fail in your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, 
for those um here's how we'll do it we may not allow people come that will be too rowdy the worship team i'll just give us two three minutes so that those who already i see people holding their seats so ushers you will just move around and then we'll display the accounts we'll do that just for the next two three minutes you'll receive some instructions and then i speak over your life and we're done hallelujah very very quickly so those who have the seats ushers you may you may just move to your seats or move around the the rows just be patient and wait for an usher drop your sacrifice and those online the accounts are there very quickly let's make that fast so that we're done in the next two to three minutes go ahead yes please let your power power to prosper rest on me rest on me let your power power to prosper rest on me rest on me let your power power to prosper rest on me Rest on me, let your power to prosper. Rest on me, rest on me. Go ahead, give with joy, give with gladness. And as you drop your seat, begin to speak over your life. Begin to speak over your destiny. I'd like you to begin to tell the Lord the one thing you want him to do in your life please don't keep quiet on account of this sacrifice please mention one area that you are trusting God to visit it doesn't even have to be financial maybe housing maybe your children maybe your health you are at the point of dying perhaps your finances perhaps a job go ahead perhaps ministry perhaps your business you are trusting to know him more to see him revealed in a higher dimension Go ahead and pray. Someone is praying. Don't just give. Pray. Lord, you come through for me in this area, that area. Go ahead. Declare. You have given. Sakate pekate pragada balakata fraska bananda kashada dias. 
Lord come through for me in the name of Jesus you are not a man that you should lie nor the son of man that you should repent in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I decree and declare by your power decree and declare by your spirit I will become a living manifestation of this desire fulfilled are you praying speak to the Lord in one minute We are still praying one minute. Whether you are praying from the US, Canada, UK, Kenya, Malawi, Uganda, Ghana, South Africa, Cameroon, anywhere at all, Australia. China, Japan, across the globe. Release your faith and pray and cry. Turn my life around, oh God. Turn my life around, oh God. Turn my life around, oh God. Let it be clear that your word works. Let it be clear that faith works. Let it be clear that sacrifice works. for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed now three very important instructions announcements and instructions that I want you to listen to number one after this service we are closing officially as a ministry on site. Our online platforms will still be functional, very, very functional. All our online social media platforms, all of them, Instagram, YouTube. So make sure that you participate fully. And um, if and when there is any broadcast online, make sure that you participate all through the break. And we'll be having a break for from today 17th and we're going to be resuming officially on the 21st of January 21st of January hallelujah all all over Koinonia Global we're resuming on the same day so please make sure you connect all our expressions we're resuming on the same day 21st if you'll be alive give Jesus a big hand clap <laughs> hallelujah so we have about a month and four days from today. Please make sure you take heed to the instructions that you have received and also do well to insist that you share these teachings with as many people. Go through all the teachings again. From January till now, there are strategic teachings that you may have heard, but probably it has not entered your spirit. So make sure you take advantage of it in the name of Jesus Christ. And to all leaders, um, remember our meeting. We're having our meeting tomorrow as communicated by your heads of department. So please make sure you avail yourself as we have the final meeting for the year. Hallelujah. Now, while standing, let me make the last altar call. Let's present some souls to Jesus Christ as our thank you gift for his faithfulness. There are people here, you came for koinonia. Within this auditorium, outside of this auditorium, let's minimize movement. And you are saying, Apostle, even though our time is stretched, please give me an opportunity. Let me not end koinonia this year without making Jesus Lord of my life. Or you are saying, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. I want to give you an opportunity to make everything good with him before you leave. The only guarantee we have is Jesus. Whether you're outside, inside, following from anywhere across the globe, I'm going to make these two calls in one. As I count one to five, very boldly, 
leave your seat and come and stand before me here as we lead you to make that declaration receiving Jesus as Lord of your life I'll begin my counting now do not be afraid don't wait for anybody to come be the first to come one koinonia we're doing this together two come come give us the honor of leading you to Jesus this one last time before we close for the year are you celebrating souls unto the king immortal invisible the only wise God if you're coming please join them very quickly I'll begin the prayer now thank you thank you thank you for making this bold decision thank you for coming thank you for making Jesus Lord of your life hallelujah now, for those of you who are in front, I want to appreciate you for the boldness to make this decision. If you're coming, please come join them very quickly. I'm about to pray. Lift your right hand, please, and say after me as loud as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I declare that I love you. I believe you. I believe in you. I receive you tonight as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight until forever, I am your child. I go from glory to glory in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for these wonderful people. Their hands are lifted unto you as a sign of surrender. They have declared your lordship over their lives. I pray in the name of Jesus that you honor these decisions. And I pray by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven and we call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. From tonight, you go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Please may I request that you move to my right. That will be your left. There will be counselors very quickly to have a word with you. Let's honor them as they go. A very quick word with you and then you are back to your seat hallelujah on a lighter note please let me announce our welfare department has something some little refreshment for our children children here meaning from age 1 to 10 hallelujah there are adult children and there are children um, children's children praise God so yes you are children but you are that's I told them in Zaria that's the price you pay for being an adult hallelujah have you been blessed? Thank you, Jesus, for Koinonia. Thank you for 2023. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. To wrap up tonight's service, we are going to shout seven hallelujah. And at the seventh hallelujah, worship team, I'll leave that over to you. So we'll share the grace, then shout seven hallelujah. And when we're done, make sure i know it's time my apologies for stretching you you have to greet at least 10 people tell them congratulations lavishly greet 10 people after hallelujah and then you can move back home and the lord bless you the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forever amen surely all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen are you ready seven hallelujahs as i count you shout ready one hallelujah. two hallelujah. three hallelujah. four hallelujah. five hallelujah. six hallelujah. finally for 2023 seven Hallelujah. Amen. Koinonia, thank you so very much. A very Merry Christmas to you. Happy New Year. Happy 2024. The Lord bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. 
Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekato. Kata Branda Kata Bakotosko to break a take and the The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline. 